Hello and welcome to episode three of the Cutting Matters podcast. I'm Alistair and once again I'm joined with by my colleague Ellen. And I'm Ellen, yeah. Hello again. You had a good weekend? Yeah, it was nice. Sun was shining again. So... Sleep much? Not really, no. It was quite a busy weekend to be honest. <laughs> I couldn't sleep with the heat. It was hot, wasn't it? Was it was just too damn hot. It's much more cooler today, which I am grateful for. It's like raining. First podcast we've recorded and it's raining outside. Yeah, it's nice to see the rain though. Yeah, it's got nice, so nice and refreshing. It's nice to see the just rain. Just been outside for a walk around just to cool down. Have you? <laughs> just sat yeah. in the rain. Just sat in the rain to cool down, like literally sizzling, steaming off. <laughs> so where have you been up to in the last week since we last spoke? Where, where, What machine have you been out with? Where, where um, have you been? Who have you again, been we've the Brother um, scanning cup machine. That's a big machine. Well, most popular machine at the moment. A lot of people want to see. New people want to see what it's about. Yeah, see all the capabilities, what it can do. So, yeah, I've been on the road with that in the back of the car. I didn't see much last week. That. Yeah, it's been a bit of a win wheel, really. Yeah. Just these weeks just merge into one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a quite a busy week last week, um, to be honest. And again, it's going to be another week, busy week this week. So you, this today's probably the only day you're going to see me. <laughs> Not back out on the road this week as well. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, well, so we're using the basically using the podcast to uh, just have a, just have yeah. a catch up. Yeah, yeah, you doing? We've got a couple of visitors joining us um, this week, so you might see me passing in here. Yeah. In in the demonstration room, but yeah, it's going to be another another busy one. Excellent, just what we want. Yeah. So you've got a bit of news about SAI, who are yeah. our external software. Yeah. So we have you know touched on what SAI are they you know have their own software yeah so we're the uk distributor for their software and they're on their 30th year now wow. celebrating Congratulations, SAI. yeah so that's really good news so yeah we've been supplying their software for i think it must be over 20 years now wow yeah yeah 20 years i think it yeah. is yeah so that's very exciting that's something really nice to talk about um they've launched their flexi sign 22 yeah beginning of yeah, it's just come out, hasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, they've got lots going on their side of I things. Mean, you went over to see them when you went to Fespa, didn't you? Yeah, so Fespa, that was in Berlin a couple of months ago, which feels like it was last year. Yeah, so busy at the minute. Yeah, just all that over feels the place. like it was so long ago. So, yeah, I saw them them guys there. There was Mark, Jasper, Monica. Them three had, um, had a stand there, so I caught up with them. And again, just talked about all the the new little features that they've got going on in their their current software that they were launching at the time. Yeah, we'll look into that in a couple of weeks' yeah, time. Yeah, we'll, we? we'll, we'll touch go, on we'll, that. We'll have a proper dig into Flexi mm-hmm. Twenty Two. Yeah. In August. Mm-hmm. So last week we were talking a little bit about the machines, and we were discussing the accessories. We we yeah we st- well we we came across the accessories, didn't we? It was part yeah. of the conversation. So yeah. we thought. This week actually might be a really good conversation to a have. A bit more depth yeah, of go, what they are and what they do. Yeah, so there's accessories for that you don't get with the machines outright, and they they're, they're an external product, so you can basically increase your workflow, increase demand of what you're doing, increase the scope of jobs that you're able to actually produce in house. But first off, we want to talk a little bit about what you actually get in the box with the machine when it's delivered mm-hmm. so if we're talking about a ce series model yeah they're very similar to what an fc series comes with as well yeah you get pretty much the, the it's, same kind yeah, of yeah it's pretty much a like for like really in fact it really is isn't it yeah so you have your blade which is the most important so you have a blade and a blade holder yeah you also have a pen and a pen holder Fiber tip ones, aren't fiber they? tip ones yeah. as well. So with a graph tip machine, you're not just using it to cut out material. You can also plot onto material as well. So you can load paper into the plotter and do CAD drawings on it, for instance. That's how they pen. started out, you know. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, they didn't start out as knife, even though that's what they're used for now, is as predominantly a cutting tool with knives. They actually mm-hmm. started out as a pen plotter, and then so I, I don't know who it was, but someone decided to stick a knife in, and it became the more attractive option for the machines. Yeah, multi-use. Yeah. <laughs> so pen, pen holder. Also, there's like this, my, what is it called? Like one of those, is it a loop? Loop, a yeah. Loop, hey, I mean, loop, hey, loop. So loop, that, you, like. that's just basically, you can just see the blade, how sharp the blade is or isn't. Yeah. So you, whether you need to change the blade or not 
could carry on using the way it is. Yeah, it's like a mini magnifying glass, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a little tool um, which which can help you. Also, with a CE machine, you can use it as a desktop. In the box, you can buy it with a stand or without a stand. Yeah. So if you buy it with a stand, in the box comes the stand. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's just a desktop model. Yeah, so the, for, the 40, the smallest one's only a desktop. Then the 60, you get option, don't you, to have it as a desktop model or on a stand. And then the two bigger options come with a stand. Yeah. Just in as the box. Standard. As, as standard, yeah, because yeah, they're massive. You couldn't fit them on a desk. Yeah. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to, would you? No. And then you have user manuals as well that's really helpful to set the machine off yeah software it's included in there which is the graphtech pro studios yeah that software's in there and there's also like a dvd disc i know it's really old school yeah most people download now for <laughs> the drivers but you also get a disc of it as well in case you have you don't have access to the internet wherever you're working mm -hmm. that's very popular isn't it yeah and then i think the master exactly four as well. as well yeah drivers yeah which they're they're again online aren't they so there's like a link where you can go and download them from our website yeah drivers for master four for corel draw or adobe illustrator so they're the most popular softwares people use but again they can be used with others like caldera onyx cadlink yeah we're working on some pages for our site at the moment to fully explain to everybody that you don't have to use the, the graph tech software that comes with the machine if you haven't got any type of design software at all that you're using at the moment then you can use the, obviously it comes with graph tech pro studio which is for windows if you're a mac user and haven't got any design software then you use the older graph tech studio software it's basically the same as pro studio just has a couple of less features but we we, we supply a full design package as part of what you get with your machine um you also get cutting master 4 which is a plug into it like so if you're already set up with whatever you're doing using adobe illustrator or corel you basically just download cutting master 4 onto your computer and that allows you to operate your plotter straight out of those softwares doesn't it yeah yeah so on top of these though we have the, the fc and the ce have their own range of accessories to allow you to do other things with the machines to open, as i said before to increase the workflow that you're able to actually produce in-house so i'm going to file them up on my phone so we don't miss any out. We'll, we'll go through the ones that we basically feel are most relevant so yeah so all of these accessories are on a website aren't they yeah. so it is a breakdown so you have the ce range and a breakdown of what accessories additional you can get for that machine yeah. likewise with an fc machine as well so it's quite easy to find isn't it on the website too yeah yeah if you go onto consumables and then onto the consumable shop part yeah. there's a bit for machine accessories and then within there there's a there's a selection that work specifically for the fc 9000 and there's also a section for ones that work specifically with the ce 7000 there's a couple of crossover ones mm -hmm, there is um like the media flanges you can use those on either machines um, we we spoke about media flanges last week, which is basically what led us onto this conversation. Um, but for the, for the FC nine thousand, so let's start with like obviously the daddy of machines, the FC nine thousand. The daddy of machines. <laughs> the yeah, do you like that one. <laughs> um, you get fifteen meters guaranteed repeatability tracking out of the box with an FC nine thousand. Yeah. But you can increase that, can't you? You can by increasing it. You would there's an optional take up spooler which is built onto the front of the machine so if you have that that's great for your roll to roll media so you have the media you know sat on the back goes through the machine and then it hooks up to the front take up spooler yeah the front so that adds an additional five ten meters five meters yeah 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 so five. it takes yeah five and takes up to a maximum of 20 then yeah um so that basically makes the plotter work the same as your large format printer yeah roll to roll um which is great mainly the, the main kind of use for that is a lot of people are, are doing a lot of print and cut jobs um so you could you could also barcode the jobs off that couldn't you yeah there is the option with an fc machine to do barcode it's called on the on the actual machine barcode emulation so in there you can print you know new like one barcode print yeah and then send lots of different jobs to the holding list in the software and then it'll pick up that one barcode, but no, it needs to cut out all these different designs. Yeah. So that again is 
is used with the take up spooler. It can be used without it, but if you're doing, you know, roll to roll, then it's very popular using yeah. that that yeah, feature. So like that, the roll that you're putting doesn't have to be one roll of the same job on repeat, does it? It could be multiple jobs on that roll and the head will look for the barcode and it will, once it reads the barcode, we'll know that job's different from the last one it cut. Yeah. So therefore you can just leave your plotter cutting away and so you've done the whole roll then, can't you? So that's really good for cost. It's cost effective, time effective, and also adding extra length to what the machine is, is capable of doing. When you put the automatic take-up spool kit on the front of an FC, though, it basically, you don't, it, that means the the actual media doesn't drop into the basket anymore, does it? It just literally goes onto the roll. Yeah, so a lot of questions that I get asked when people are, you know, looking at a take-up spooler is, when the material comes through the machine, does it then get wrapped around the take-up spooler straight away? Because, you know, then it'll be a bit of friction there because it's pulling through to yeah. try and wrap it around the take-up spooler. Where it doesn't, there's like a five meter or a meter, you can set it depending on the jobs that you have, yeah. that it will cut, then it will feed through the machine and then it will take it up. So yeah. it's, there's not that friction. So yeah, I suppose it doesn't get rid of the, the media basket because it drops into the media basket first and then it will wind up after there's a bit of slack, isn't there? Yeah, but you can you can decide how much media you want it to slack you know if you want to use that media basket or not but nine times out of ten it won't fall below to hit the media math yeah. basket if you get what i'm saying yeah that's great mm -hmm. um the other thing to note about that automatic sake of school is so there's there's four sizes of fc 9000 machines this is, yeah this is important information actually <laughs> yeah um so what size we've got we've got 75 got 100, 100 140 160. 160 and the automatic take up spools has two sizes yeah and it's for the 140 one and 160, 160 machines only. yeah so it's yeah. too small fs if this is something that you're looking to potentially buy an fc 9000 for it's got to be the two wider models yeah it's for more wide format isn't it really yeah um so that covers you with your information that you need for the take-up spooler the next kind of accessory which i would say is really ideal for the moment so if you're watching this podcast it is the middle of august we've just finished a heat wave it's boiling it's been absolutely boiling obviously if you're listening to this in the future and it's middle of december then this kit might not quite be right for this time of year but or needed yet yeah or needed yet but it's, it is handy to have if you're cutting a lot of if you're detailing and you're doing a lot of ppf and car vinyl or if you're doing a lot of block color vinyl really because when that comes off the roll it can cre it create static anyway but in hot temperatures, from past experience, when I used to be a sign fitter, in in the heat, it I, that type of vinyl kicks out loads and loads of static. So have you ever used one of these anti-static kits? Once. Once. Yeah. Was that in your previous job or was it? Yeah, yeah. Here? I'm, no, it was. Was it here? We well, we fitted one to a me, me and myself and James fitted one to a machine. Um, Is James the engineer here? Yeah, our, our James. Yeah. Um, I also had one of these on a machine when I used to be a sign fitter 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Um, because of the amount the the workroom that we had there separate from the office, but with the printers in there, as well as the plotter and in the summer months, it was just boiling and you would, you get so much static off the printers as they're, as they're printing through static and then static off the cutters. So basically there's an anti-static kit that we provide for the plotters. And what that is, it's a couple of pieces of special. It's not just any elastic. It's the elastic's got like a, I think it's like a silver thread in it. Yeah. So that's, that attaches to the front and the back of the machine. And basically what it's designed to do is catch and harness the, static that's being produced off the roll so the problem that you have is if you let the if you in the summer months if you've got a load of static coming off your roll and it's feeding into the machine mm -hmm. yeah it's fine until you touch the machine but if you say you go to touch a control panel and you ground that static that's built up you can quite easily pop your mainboard yeah. so and that's if you've got an older machine that's a problem because those parts aren't very easily available no, anymore not available as as much as what the current machines are is there yeah and if you've got a new machine then obviously you don't want to bite the main board off on a new machine so having the anti-static quit quit kit is quite beneficial right now because it, it will stop that from from happening it yeah. basically pulls the, the static that's being generated off the roll into the legs of the machine which earths it 
-hmm. it stops it going up into the actual working part of the machine and attack it if it, you just don't get that you don't get that um grounding when you press the button through yeah. yourself and they're available aren't they in all the different sizes the machine comes in yeah so it was well, one kit so you cut it down to size yeah um if you've got you, it comes as everything for a 160 obviously if you haven't got a 160 these work on any, any of the machines though so whereas CE as well as an fc machine yeah you can use it on, on a ce you can use it on an fc machine um just dead beneficial say if you're doing loads and loads and loads of vinyl right now the other thing may be handy to have for the wider models of the ce's and the fc's as well we also do additional um pinch rollers yeah so the smaller widths of pinch of um sorry the the, the width of the machine you get a, a certain amount of um pinch rollers with them you the pinch rollers the little rolls or the actual you have the sorry you have the roll. push roller assembly yeah which is the arm and yeah. you have the pinch roll which is your little rubber wheel because a lot of people lot of customers do get confused by that yeah so the, you know which is which yeah so you your assembly is your actual arm that's on the machine and then the pinch wheel pinch roller is a little wheel on the end which they're a consumable item but that's another whole different um podcast um but again in hot conditions vinyl can become really really malleable and it can it can start kind of buckling in the heat so i went out to a job a few years ago now and we the customer only the machine he had was a, was a quite i was an, a lot older fc model i think it was a i think it was an fc 8000 and he was using i think with the, the fcs back then you could add it didn't matter what size machine you had you could add one or two extra pinch rollers to it or push roller assemblies for an extra pinch roller um and he was he only had two on his machine but he because of the distance between the two push roller arms he was getting a bit of a bow in the media in the, in the hot weather so he put an extra one in the middle to keep it flat got rid of worked a treat worked an absolute treat got rid of any he was cutting ppf and he was cutting ppf not for cars he was cutting ppf for bike frames oh nice yeah mountain bike frames that's cool. In fact, I'll give him a shout out. It's uh, Shack Wrap up in Berry. He won't, he won't mind. He, he, oh, he... I think I recognise that. Company. Yeah, we did a we did a po uh, not podcast. I did a, a blog on him at the time. Yeah. In fact, at the time we went to see him, he'd just done. It was like an entrepreneurial show on ITV with Karen Brady. Oh. He was on. He was on TV. Yeah, back then. So that kind of all tied in quite nicely at the time with the content that we were able to produce. Yeah. So you can get extra push roller assemblies for that extra pinch wheel for the fc you can also get them for the two wider widths of the ce as well if you're having issues in the heat with your media buckling up so just to stick on to the push roller assembly yeah on each machine how many can you add on so, so they all come with two is it yeah the larger ones might come with they come up the, the larger like when you get to a 160 they come with four as standard mm -hmm. then you can add up to the new fc 9000 you can add i think one or two more onto the onto the larger ones obviously you only there's a very specific amount of when you look at your machine you might not realize this there are blue stickers on the front of your machine and those blue stickers actually are to align your push your push or assembly arm up to so that's what those blue stickers relate to. So you, you can slide them. You can change where they are. If you're only cutting some, if you've got a big 160 machine and you're only cutting something that's A3 size and you want to get quite a nice firm grip, you can move them along. So it just clips on Much there. Much handy, isn't it? So handy yeah, you can way. you can add them um, once. If you, if this is something that you want to do, you're not quite sure, just give us a call up um, and we'll be able to talk you through the process of getting that changed. It's not quite as straightforward as it used to be on the older machines. It was something that you could buy, fit yourself, now, because of the way the FC9000 is built, if you want to add a push roller assembly, then it will require us to fit that for you because the way that the whole side of the machine has to come off now to get to... Big job. It, yeah, it's, it's something that you should get one of our engineers to come out and do, to be honest, just to make sure it's, it's been installed properly. Mm -hmm. And then something you quite like, which gives you more scope for the machine, is the second pen kit. Yes. So the second pen kit, so we mentioned before that the machine comes with a blade, blade holder, pen, pen holder. Yeah. So the second pen kit enables you to have either a blade and a pen at the same time. 
So it's very good for plotting out your design and then cutting out your design. Yeah. So it does two jobs in one. So that's a very good um, accessory, really. And a lot of a lot of the customers that I spoke to, I've gone, you know, bought an FC one hundred and sixty um, instead of buying one of our apparel machines. So the apparel machine is catered for your your pen plotting and, and cutting material. Yeah, that's, that's if you're a fashion house, that's what you buy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So this is with, with the apparel machine. It only comes um, in a one thirty wide, and that's a CE machine. But the spec, the it's like specced out to be, you know, for that application. Yeah. But we can modify the FC machine to be a, on the similar sort of scale. Yeah. If so, someone's got, if someone wants to go a wider format than a, the apparel that machine, would, that would be the only reason why you yeah. go for an FC machine. Otherwise, and, and you would out. buy the apparel machine, wouldn't you? Yeah. So because the apparel machine is limited to a one thirty wide, the FC comes in either one forty or one sixty. So we can modify it, and having this accessory is one of the modifications which would need to be done. Yeah. So yeah, it just enables you to do two jobs in one. It's the my i was i was went to see my cousin yesterday and he's an architect and it was talk he was, we were talking about the machines and things and then it was quite funny how it twigged with him that i was like well the plotters because you don't have to just cut you can draw with them I said a lot of architects offices 10 20 30 years ago used to have these to draw the plans because it's rather than because they, when they take the plans on, onto the building site or whatever, or they've got them in, as they're doing building drawings and things like that, they would plot these out on plotters rather than, because printers, there wasn't printers really, office printers big enough back then. So they'd buy the plotters and it would do it for you. And he was like, that's why I know your equipment. <laughs> because he's not a sign maker or anything. He, yeah. he, and then he was like, of course. That, so, but the machines are standard, only have one tool holder in the head, don't they? Yeah. So as Ellen said, when you buy your machine, you get a you get a blade holder with a blade, and you also get a pen and a pen holder. As it stands, if you wanted to plot and draw out the box, then you'd have to manually put the pen in the holder of the machine, and then if you want to cut, then you have to swap them out. Sorry, and then <laughs> I just smacked my watch on the uh, on the microphone, and that wasn't great. Getting excited. Yeah, sorry. Mm. And then um, the beauty about the second pen kit is is that you can have the pen in a separate holder which means the machine will swap over jobs for you automatically which means you don't have to manually change them you out. have to sit over the over the machine you yep. can set the machine off with the second kit and go make a coffee yeah or a tea and it'll do its job you won't have to stand there and do it yourself yeah it's great yeah really really handy again mm. that they those those actual pieces of kit say so that they're available to buy um through us or our resellers um and it's quite an easy job to to fit those as well i don't think um they require one of our technicians to go out and fit one of those to, to your machine for you um moving on to accessories for the c7000 i think this is one that you really really like and you're quite excited about it's just, it's just dead it's a dead simple idea but yeah. it works really really well so it's the carrier sheet table, isn't it? Yeah. For the C7000. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll let you talk about this one because I know how, how how much you like this one. Well, I just think it's just a dead simple idea. So if you, you're you doing a lot of card cutting, you can basically, if you haven't got, that there is a whole market for the flatbeds. So by saying this, I'm not saying this to take any kind of heat or knowledge away from why you should buy a flatbed table cutter because for quite a few of the applications that the table cutters are for that is why you need them and we will cover that in future podcasts but if you're doing a lot of just a3 card cutting or a4 card cutting things with a c7000 well the best way the best way to get a nice even cut is to buy the carrier sheet table and what that is is Two arms that clip onto the back of the machine, two arms that clip onto the front, and it just allows your card that you've got on your carrier sheet to be kept completely flat and supported either side. So it's a dead simple idea, but I think I've, I've a few people who've phoned up about they've been doing their their kind of business model is card cutting. When I've said this to them, it's been a no brainer. Got to get that because it just keeps everything nice and flat. 
even if you buy the desktop model of a CE 7000, whether it's a 60 or the 40, because of the, the build of them, there's like a, a chamfered edge on the front, isn't there? Yeah, there is. So there's the, the media hangs off the front. And if you're doing a lot of, which is fine if you're doing roll to roll, um, because you also get a, a roll feeder if you buy the desktop model. So you can put your rolls on the desk off the bat and it obviously comes through the, through the front of the machine, drops off and it automatically start rolling itself up really just because of the way the, the tension of the media works. But if you're doing a lot of car cutting and car can be heavy, you don't want that flapping around off the front of the machine. Just having that table, keeping it nice and flat just gives you what I think is a lot, lot better cut. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, moving back onto media flanges, as you know, you can use them on both FCs and C machines, can't you? Yeah. And they just allow you to... They just help guide the material into the machine so they don't move. It, it stops skewing and it stops yeah. friction as well. Yes, because skewing is quite... can be a something that does happen, you know, if you're cutting long jobs. Yeah. So in a C machine, if you're cutting, you know, more than two metres, there is that chance that it will skew. Yeah. Cause... So having these media flange will reduce that. Yeah. Likewise with the FC machine, you know, the heavier the media, you know, that will skew. And likewise, if it's light media, you know, it, it needs something to keep it in place. Yeah, it just helps if when, you, when you've got weight. Um, obviously, the, the push roller assemblies that you get hold everything in place really, really tightly. But if you can do anything to increase that further, then the media flanges are a really, really good choice to do that that brings this through to our ask ellen for this week which we've been asked what is the process of booking a demonstration to come in so people can see the machines and what does the demonstration include so that to me like if you wanted to potentially buy a machine and add accessories on What's mm-hmm. the whole process, Ellen? Because you do the demos, don't you? Yeah. So usually we have the likes of our, our reseller network that they have customers who want to come and see a certain piece of kit. So what we do then is we we book a day in our demonstration room here in Wrexham. So we have the day here. Customers come here with their media, and then we run through different machines which the customer's been looking at or which we would recommend they would need with their material then we just go through all the processes you know whether we want it to cut you know certain thicknesses if you want to perforate you know we'll go through all the applications which is required um and then if there was additional accessories which is needed with the machine then again we would have them here ready for the demonstration um and then guide the customer to to use what what we've shown them yeah but that yeah we can we our open house um is available so it's just a case of booking a day in which is available for either myself or tom who can do demonstrations and the the customer whenever they're free to come in as well what's your what machine are you getting most requests for for dems at the moment at the moment again it would be the laser machine yeah still getting a lot of inquiries coming through it's still relatively new for us isn't it yeah it is and i know like coming up to the christmas period a lot of Christmas markets, people are wanting to create their own decorations and have, you know, little market stores as well. So that's a lot of a lot of the people that I spoke to are looking for that sort of thing, personalization yeah. for, you know, just little craft products that people are putting on Etsy for the time being. Okay. So that that still is a, a machine which is getting the most interest. <laughs> yeah. Um new machine for us still really I know we start we talked a little bit like about this this week, but we started working with weird at the start of 2020 um but obviously everyone knows what happened with covid and that kind of put our plans back a little bit in terms of time frames of being able to grow with in the uk so it's only been the last 18 months where we've really put a heavy press on it isn't it and obviously that's still generating a lot of momentum for us and the other thing is is that that's busy in our dem room for that machine because our resellers also have our graph tech equipment in their showrooms as well, don't they? Yeah. So not everybody has to come here to see a graph tech. They no. Can... I mean, if our reseller has our equipment in their demonstration room, 
we can support them so we can visit their demonstration room and yeah. offer assistance there as well we do virtual demonstrations as well so if you can't make it to our showroom or reseller showroom we can do it virtually just via zoom or teams or something like that yeah yeah well, that's good i think we are going to be pushing that a little bit more to help out our resellers aren't we especially now we've bought and invested in the kit that we're using for the podcast <laughs> so um yeah doing virtual dems opening the machines up if you aren't we've only got one dem room haven't we we're only in wrexham and not everybody can get to us so being able to do it virtually is a massive help isn't it yeah so you've had you've, you've done a few now haven't you it was yeah very popular during lockdown yeah People, you know we're still wanting to learn about equipment and see equipment so we offered that during that period and we still get a lot of interest for it as well it it kind of is more beneficial for certain customers because coming out to Wrexham is a, is a you know a day trip yeah. out of their their working environment so they're losing out on work you know days as well see. for people who are coming maybe coming across from Ireland as well yeah exactly so yeah virtual demonstrations is definitely something which is um get, is is more popular now I mean we we were offering it you know before the pandemic but it wasn't really, you know, people really want to come and see the machine, feel the machine, you know, understand it. Yeah. Whereas now a lot of people are reading stuff up on the internet and then we're offering all that, you know, consistent support. So being able to show them on, on the screen is better. Yeah. And the beauty of coming in house to do your demos, obviously you get to bring your own media and your own cut files so you can see the potential of what you're going to take home. Yeah, you know, how what you're gonna create, you know, long term if you were to invest into a machine. Yeah. So definitely. it is a light for like, you know, demonstration and samples. Yeah. So at the minute, I know we're August twenty twenty two right now, but current um equipment in the dem room available to dem. We've got C seven thousand, I'm just looking around, we've got an F C nine thousand out front, we've got the WID laminator, we've got see Ellen said the WID laser systems in here we've got a Graftech FCX 2000 flatbed so all all the major players oh there's an F Mark 2 in there as well there is one of the FCX 4000s so that's the electrostatic flatbed that's just oh, course, in the yeah. spare room yeah it's in the other room at the moment isn't it as well so yeah it is kitted out there's a lot of yeah a lot of machines to to look at when you come in <laughs> for sure yeah so if you want to drop if you want to get in touch with us for a dem um, visit the product page on the website that you are interested in. If you scroll to the bottom, there's a contact us form. Um, fill that out and we'll get back in touch with you pretty quickly to arrange a date. If you're already speaking to our resellers, again, work with work with your reseller to either visit them for a demonstration. If they've got the kit in their showroom, as, as, as Alan said, we can come to you or come to the reseller to, to do the dem with them as well if they, if they want that. Um, or if it's something that they haven't got ac or access to in their demonstration room at the moment, the roll-to-roll -roll cutters are the most popular kind of bits of kit that they have in their dem room. So if it is like a flatbed or something like that, then they'll give us a call to arrange to come and see us. So yeah, speak to the resellers as well, and they they'll work with ourselves and we'll work with them so we can we can get you sorted with your your demonstration for the machine. But I think that really brings about the end. Yeah, of this I think project. that covers everything yeah, today, today, doesn't it? Yeah. So. If you're watching on YouTube, please give us a like, please drop us a comment and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit the bell icon. So when we release our next one next week, you'll get a notification pop up that we've got one. Again, this being a podcast, if you're listening, thank you very much. If you could drop us a rating on Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, that would be fantastic. But that's the podcast for this week. So thank you, Ellen. Yes, yeah, so that's it for this week. And hopefully we will see you all again next week. Yeah, you're bugging me back out on the road. So you're going to have a busy one to talk about next week as well, aren't you? Yeah, sure will. Thanks, Ellen. Thank you.